I'm doing this video because people may be intimidated by servicing their own bike, as I once was, but I want to show you that with some research, dedication and good tools, you can bring your bike back to life with a do-it-yourself bicycle service. I may make mistakes with mechanics and it is okay to make mistakes. I've learned from them and hopefully you guys and girls can too. I've broken this video down and added timestamps so it's easy to follow along with me as I do my gravel bike service. Remember, try and fail, but never fail to try. Let's get into it. The first part of my gravel bike overhaul and likely the hardest to get right is the wheels. Now first things first I want to check that the wheels are running true. Now I'm going to do this by simply spinning the wheels in the frame and then checking them by being in line and seeing if they run true against the frame. Looking for any sideways movement of the actual wheel itself. I also want to be checking the tyres, I want to check that there are no slits in the tyres, no damages to the tyres, anything that can cause issues when I'm out and about on the gravel. As well as the tyres, I also want to look along the rim. Now the best way to do this is by fill, so run your finger around the rim and just make sure that there is no damage. You also want to be checking the spokes. Now when you're checking the spokes, you're making sure that all the spokes have the same tension. I do this by having a hand each side of the wheel and simply checking them by pressing them a little bit. What I also like to do is check how the bike is performing before I actually make any changes so I have something to compare to. So here I'm simply spinning the wheels and seeing how they roll. I'm also going to check for play in the bearings. Now I'm going to do this just by moving the wheels side to side. You want to see if there's any movement, any sideways movement in the wheel. I want to quickly talk about bearings because this bike has loose ball bearings, not the more modern cartridge style bearings, so that makes this a little bit more complicated. Now before I actually make any changes, what I do is take pictures of how it is. That way I can see exactly how it was before I took it apart, because one of the hardest things with these intricacies is to actually put it back together exactly how it came off. So taking pics helps you do just that. Now the first step is to loosen the lock nut and I do this using two cone spanners. Cone spanners are the thin spanners that are used to get on these thin lock nuts on the wheels. These two spanners that I have. So once that's loose, I can then simply just remove the lock nut by hand. And as you can see, the loose ball bearings are sat in there. They are not the newer style cartridge bearings, unfortunately. Important tip, count the bearings and don't lose any or try not to lose any especially when you are removing the axle it's important to know how many bearings come out of the wheel you'll be surprised how easy it is to drop one or to lose one or to suddenly think that maybe you miscounted so be sure on this step once i remove the axle i then actually put the bolts back onto the axle outside of the wheel so that i know exactly which way it goes back together now you can see that the old bearings look dirty, you can see that the grease is discoloured and you can also feel some grit in there to be honest. So it's a good job that we are revamping these bearings, give them a new lease of life. Now to remove the bearings you want to simply do that with something magnetic, in my case a magnetic screwdriver. Simply pull the bearings out one by one, again counting them and put them down in a safe place. Put them somewhere separate. Now first with the rear wheel I actually need to remove the cassette. So to do that, I need the big torque wrench. Now my torque wrench here goes up to 250 Newton meters. It's nice and long, so it helps me get some good leverage when removing the cassette. You'll also need a cassette tool, which is used to undo the lock nut. You'll also need a socket to go onto the cassette. Mine here is a 24 millimeter. A chain whip is also required. This is to grip the cassette. And once you have all of those, you are good to go. First, before I make any changes, I'm gonna check the cassette to see how it is performing. I wanna see if there's any play and I wanna see if it is spinning freely. Now, all seems good here. To remove the cassette, the cassette tool goes in the axle. The 24 millimeter socket goes over the cassette tool. Then the chain whip grips the cassette, applies some force and the lock nut will come loose. You can take the cassette off the free hub. I also want to be checking the free hub to see if there is any play in the free hub or if it's loose but again we're all good here. Taking the cassette off also allows me to look at the cassette, see if there's any damage, see how much it is worn. Now with the cassette off I can see the bearings so what I'm going to do is take more pictures of the axle and the bearings and lock nuts and the washers again so I know how it goes back on. Now I want to use the cone spanners to remove the lock nut as I did on the front wheel and these cone spanners are good I just bought them off Amazon I think they were seven pounds for two 
So once the lock nuts are removed and loose, remove the axle from the wheel. Again, as you remove it, try not to send bearings flying everywhere. I then use the same method to remove the bearings with a magnetic screwdriver, putting the bearings in a safe place. Cleaning the bearing races is an important job in your bike service. So to do that, I simply remove the excess grease with a clean rag, and then I clean out the bearing housing with degreaser. I rinse everything off with clean water to remove the degreaser. That is an important step. You don't want degreaser in your bearing housing. All the nuts, axles and skewers got the same treatment as well. I clean them with degreaser, then rinse them with clean water. I'm getting everything super clean, ready to go back on the bike. The same goes for the cassette, which isn't in the worst condition to be honest. Next up with the bike tune up, the bike service is to install the bearings and to do this I apply grease to the inner race of the bearings then I add the new ball bearings in. At this point make sure to put the correct amount of bearings back in. This sounds simple but once the bearings are in and covered in grease it is sometimes hard to see how many there are in there. Now this is a complex part of servicing your bike at home so make sure to take your time on this step. I also apply grease to the outer race as well before putting the axle back through. When you put the axle back through, try not to knock the bearings out of the other side. I then filled the bearings with extra grease to make sure there was plenty in there before screwing the outer race, lock nuts and washers back onto the axle. A quick check to see how the wheel is rolling before tightening the lock nut and then another check after tightening the lock nut to make sure that the wheel is spinning correctly and freely. The cassette also needs to go back on the rear wheel and putting the cassette back on is much simpler than taking it off. Basically install the lock nut so that it's hand tight, install the cassette tool, get the torque wrench and tighten that bad boy up to 40 newton meters. Next up in the gravel bike overhaul is the bearings in the front wheel. I follow the exact same process as the rear wheel. You want to grease the inner race install all the bearings there are 12 in each side of the front wheel here i want to add additional grease install the axle and outer bearing races get the lock nut on there and tighten that up so the bearings spin freely and there is no play in the axle next up we're going to look at the headset bearings and check that they are nice and clean now this is an essential part of gravel bike maintenance especially on the lower bearing race which is close to the front wheel to get the headset bearings out, we need to remove the stem, the bars. So I first remove the top nut on the stem and then I'm going to loosen off the stem bolts. This allows me to simply slide the bars and the washers and spacers off of the forks. Once they're removed, there is nothing to hold the forks on so they can simply be dropped out of the frame. Nothing was in disastrous condition to be honest. Both the top and bottom bearings were running smooth. The bottom bearings had more grit in the housing but that's likely to happen because the front wheel is firing grit, mud, etc. into that bearing race. So I'm not too surprised. Once everything's out, it's time to clean it all off. Everything needs to be clean when you're servicing your own bike. So first remove any excess grease with a rag, then apply some degreaser to a clean rag and give it a good second going over. Making sure they are super clean. Anything bearing related, we want no dirt or grit whatsoever. It's time to reapply the new grease. I'm using a decent grease from Park Tools here and I want to apply grease to the top and bottom headset bearing housing. I also apply grease to the forks before sliding the bottom race onto the forks. I also apply more grease to the bottom race once it's on the forks. The same goes for the top bearings. Once we're all greased up, we're ready to install the forks, making sure that the cables are the correct side of the forks. That's an easy mistake to make and a frustrating one. You'll have to take everything off and redo it. So then everything goes back on in the correct order. The bearing cap goes on, I believe it is called, then the washers, the bars, and then the top cap. The top cap is giving your bearing load, preload. So you wanna do this up so that there is no play in the headset at all, but that your bars can spin freely. So that's how tight you wanna do that up. Then lastly, what we wanna do is align the bars with the front wheel and tighten up the stem bolts to the correct torque, which is five Newton meters here. That's what I'm using for these stem bolts. I hope it's all clear and you're managing to follow along with this do-it-yourself bicycle service. Next up in the overhaul, this gravel bike overhaul, is the bottom bracket. So with the bottom bracket, what I'm checking for is that it spins freely. 
which it does it's actually not bad at all it spins really really well i'm also listening for any graunching or any noises that suggest there is some grit in there i'm also going to see if there is any play in the bottom bracket or if there is any sideways movement but again it's all good here the bottom bracket is solid and i won't be replacing it this time round Next up in the bike service is the chainring inspection. Now to inspect the chainrings is pretty simple. You want to look for sharp teeth and excessive wear. You want all the teeth to be uniform. You don't want some to be nice and flat topped and some to be really sharp like a, like a shark's fin. This one is looking all good. So at this point, I am not going to be replacing this chain ring. Next up, brake pads. Now this is one of the most common tasks and it's a very important part of knowing how to service your bike at home. It's something that you should be doing frequently. I had fun with this and it's a good job I change them and you'll see why. So let's take a closer look. So I started by undoing the T25 Torx nut. I thought this removed the pads. Um, it was too tight to do with a screwdriver so I'd done it with a torque wrench. I was able to undo the bolt which create extra space between the pads. That basically moves the inner pad towards or away from the disc. So that gave me a bit of space, easier to get them out. I then removed the retaining clip and I was able to get one pad out no problem. The second pad was super tight, I couldn't get it free by hand. Even with a tight grip with the pliers I couldn't get it to budge. I then tried the torque wrench again to push the pad out but that wasn't the best option as I managed to strip some of the threads on the bolt. I should have known and really investigated before going in heavy handed. Again, we learn and we move forward. I then tried the screwdriver inside the caliper, no luck. I tried the top of the pad again and with some force, I managed to get it free. And look at the state of it. I'm pleased that I did actually take the time to replace these pads because this has basically just disintegrated in there. This is unusable and this is dangerous. So again, good job I checked this and good job I'm replacing this in my gravel bike service. Next up, the front pads. Now again, I undone the torque nut to create some space for the pads to be removed. I then removed the retaining clip which holds the pads in place. One pad came out with no issue, the same as the back but one didn't come out but having learned from the rear pad i used a screwdriver to push the pad it took a bit of persuading again but it eventually popped out this one wasn't as disastrous as the one in the rear now the guidelines say to replace the pads when they are below three millimeters however due to the age of these pads i wanted to replace them all anyway as you can see they were pretty low so i made a good choice there and one of the pads was flaking away so the chances of the others flaking away and being in bad condition are pretty high now something i should have done first which was a bit of a revelation with my bike service and it turns out you can remove the retaining clip this red retaining clip or whatever you want to call it on the brake caliper now once that is off you can then use a spanner to remove the side of the caliper instead of using the t25 torque bits spanner eight millimeters allows you to get a lot of leverage and it simply come undone it was gritty don't get me wrong and it was pretty stuck but it come off better with the spanner. I should have done that first, but hindsight, it's good to know. Now with everything removed, I can give everything a good clean. So I'm gonna use the disc brake cleaner. I'm gonna spray that in there and I'm gonna wash everything out, get any grease out, really try and get to the threads of the side of the caliper so that it can go back in nicely. I also put a touch of grease onto this big side of the caliper, this big bolt, so that it can screw in. Very cautious using grease around brakes. Obviously you don't want grease to get on the pads. That's gonna affect your braking. Now to get these new brake pads in, it is a little bit fiddly and it does take some maneuvering. These Avid BB5 brake pads are a little bit complex. Because they are separate, you can't just slide it in. So to make it easier for myself, I undone the cable on the front and rear. This allows the piston to retract and give me more space to get the pads in, install the new pads. Now it is a pain, like I said, I ended up removing the side of the caliper again to give myself more space and visibility. And with a little push and shove, I got them both in and installed the retaining clips. So that is both brake pads now in, good to go. I'm pleased I've done this one. They were clearly in bad condition. Next up, the drive chain. Now, there's nothing like a good clean to bring your bike back to life. So that is exactly what I'm going to do with the drive chain. So before installing the new chain, I want to make sure that the drive chain was spick and spam. To start with, I scraped the excess dirt and muck off the front chain ring and then done the same thing on the jockey wheels as it was pretty dirty. So this was much needed. Then on went the degreaser with a sponge before using a stiff brush. 
Once everything was clean, I washed it off with clean water again to remove any degreaser. With the drive chain clean, next up in the bike service, the bike spruce up the gravel bike overhaul is to remove the old chain. I first had to find the connecting pin. This chain doesn't have a magic link. Finding this connecting pin was actually pretty hard because the chain was so dirty. Once I had found it, I used a chain tool to break the links and simply remove the chain. You can see the state the chain was in. It's, it's not worth cleaning. There was some rust here and there, so it could potentially be damaged just like the brake pads. I laid the old chain out against my new chain and looked at it link for link so I can see how long the old chain is and I can see it stretched by over half a link. So I'm pleased I made the decision to get a new one. Now laying the chains out side by side, I can also see the correct length. So I grabbed my chain tool and removed the extra chain links, making sure to have an outer and inner link at each end of the chain so it can actually be connected up. I then feed the new chain over the chain ring and through the rear derailleur and back onto the bike. I stupidly bought a chain with no magic link again by mistake so the install was a little bit different. I saw this good trick online using a wire to hold the chain in place while you push the connecting pin in so I did just that and it actually worked a treat. A nice little trip when you're servicing your bike at home. I then push the connecting pin through the chain so it's in place, whip the chain tool out and push the pin into the link in the chain. Then after you've done that, you need to snap the excess off the connecting pin to leave a solid link. Final step is to check that the link can move freely without issue, which it did. So all good there. Next up, I want to get the wheels back on the bike. But before I do that, I want to give the discs a good clean. They may have been contaminated with degreaser. So what I'm going to do with that is use disc brake cleaner and a kitchen towel. I find this works well. Also, you can guarantee a kitchen towel has no grease on it. And you should really be wearing gloves here so no natural oil from your skin contaminates the pads or the disc. Um, but I don't have any at this moment in time. Mental note self, buy some mechanical gloves. I then followed the same process with the pads. This time I use a cloth as it's a little stronger and easier to get it in and amongst the pads and just give it a little back and forth to make sure the pads are nice and clean. So now everything's clean, it's time to get the wheels back on. First the rear wheel, make sure you're in the smallest cog when you're removing the rear wheel or putting the rear wheel back on. This will make your life much easier and it gives yourself more space to work with. The front, simples, just slide that straight in. I always put the bike on the floor and redo the wheels. I find that the wheels seat much better when it's using gravity and the bike is down on the floor. With everything back on in place, it's time to adjust the brakes Another common part of a do-it-yourself bike service. If you're servicing your bikes at home, this is gonna be quite common. You do it every time you change your pads. First, I check how it's all looking. Then I screw the inner pad inwards so it's close to the disc, but not touching. Next, I pull the cable tight with the pliers, taking up any slack in the cable. Again, really give this a good pull so that you have no slack in the cable. If you do, then this isn't gonna work. So again, when doing this, you want to get this outer pad as close to the disc as possible without actually touching the disc. I then screwed the cable tight and Bob's your uncle. The new pads are installed and ready to get to work. Onto the front brake, I repeated the same process. Again, once installed, I check and make sure that it's all working correctly and that there is no rubbing. The pads are not rubbing the disc. So that is how you bring your bike back to life. I hope you enjoyed this process. It's relaxing for me, but a little frustrating at times. Hopefully this gives you some insight on how to service your own bike. It's not super difficult with the correct tools and some learning. That was my full gravel bike overhaul. If you like this video, smash the like button. Click the subscribe button to see me go out on my first ride, which is in a video coming very, very soon. And click the notification bell to be notified when a new video is released. As always, fine people, until next time, safe riding.